Ok, so my starfield phase culminated in an outburst of rage, so it's time for more Skyrim! Skyrim is always fresh in my heart. So today I'm presenting to you my lovely Shadow Warrior, a character build made of my unyielding desire to blink, teleport, jump and explode. He has it all. He teleports from one enemy to another in close combat, becomes ethereal almost on demand and becomes invisible at will just to cause a little bit of a burst of energy when the ethereal form is broken. He can also perform deadly sneak attacks, also on demand, and cast spells with his bow. He thinks switching between combat styles mid-combat is like super dope. The only problem is, the guy is so darn powerful, half of the build is made redundant by the other half. But hey, that has never stopped me. Let's see how it goes. The roleplay idea looks like this. It's like Aragorn, but a dark hero Aragorn, once prophesized to become a great hero and a savior of humanity, but then facing many hardships, with his claims of a noble lineage and heroic destiny being ridiculed and rejected in his hometown. Disillusioned and vengeful, he turns to the darker forms of magic and rigorous combat training, so that one day he can assassinate the Emperor, cause some chaos in Tamriel from the shadows, just to emerge as the savior at the right and ripe time. Naturally, a Dark Brotherhood candidate this one. His combat style is also inspired by one Middle-earth character, although not from the Tolkien's books. It's accidentally, almost accidentally, Italian from The Shadow of Mordor. I, I guess it's a way of doing Italian. The combat is just a dance of death, a beautiful one. It's fast-paced, versatile and stupidly enjoyable. That's because there's a lot of that uh, th that trademark intermod synergy of mine here. So uh, let's talk about the required mods and what they do. Yay, it's a Manas Freyr build. Yay, you can stop pestering me in the comments about it now. Yay, Manas and Freyr are two complementary mods. The former is a race overhaul, the latter a standing stone overhaul. And what's unique about them is that the standing stone effects are different for each race, which means plenty of new options for builds. It also means I am wearing the ethereal crown again. I know, I know, horrible, horrible, boring, but it means I get to test two new standing stone effects at once, and in the case of this build it means I can become a perfect stealth archer while also blinking in and out of existence when I fight in melee. <laughs> the lover stone grants me a sick ability of slam poetry, and another known as poetry in motion. With both of them I get to become ethereal for 5 seconds each time a fight starts. When this ethereal state is broken, I then release a little shockwave, which has a chance of launching surrounding enemies into space! Naturally, since I have a cool ability triggered on the start of each combat, I am just forced to use the Escape Artist sneak perk from Vokri perk overhaul. If you're new to the channel, yeah, the perk means I can start a new combat almost whenever I want by just crouching and then standing up again, so I use it with all the super cool powers from other mods that can be triggered at the start of a fight. How could I resist such power? In a nutshell, it means I get to crouch and then become immune to all attacks, but then if I attack within 5 seconds I explode and send my foes flying, which means I can dispatch them with no resistance or put some distance between us to finish them off with my super cool bow. That bow, the Bow of Shadows, is perfectly balanced. It makes you invisible when you equip it. It also makes you move 20% faster when drawn, which stacks with the ranger perk and with the outlaw ability from the new shadow stone, which means we move not only at full speed, but we move 40% faster than normal with an arrow notched on the bow of shadows, which also has an extra rate of fire, so the entire combo makes you an excellent combat archer, on top of excellent stealth archery of course, but this is not enough. 
I need to teleport around the battlefield and slay people in style. Hence I use two spells from Triumvirate, another perfectly balanced mod, but for spells this time. Shadow Dance allows me to teleport at short distances when I jump in combat and the Nightblade spell teleports me to a target at my crosshair when I perform a melee attack from up to 50 feet away. Oh, and it also deals extra damage dependent on your current magicka, which for the finished build means up to 680 damage on such attack. Just about 700 damage that almost nothing can resist, it's no biggie. Of course, it's often redundant because you can always perform a sneak attack with your dagger and sword. Yes, pretty much always because escape artist. A few bits of anniversary edition or creation club content are in use too, namely the broken health draining spells, the robes of alteration and destruction and of course the bow of shadows. And due to the vaguely middle earthly inspiration I also used Lord of the Rings weapon collection mod, I really wanted my dagger to be a broken sword. A dagger in your left hand is used of course for the stupidly efficient dual wielding combat and for one hit sneak kills. Now obviously this is a power gamer build, so I have chosen a Breton for my race, so that I can build up a powerful magic resistance and use my item slots for other things. With Manaz installed you only get a 10% resistance to begin with, but later you can obtain another 15%, we add 30% from the magic resistance perk and that's 55, which is more than sufficient for a guy who avoids combat, uh, well avoids damage all the time. We can also obtain extra health regeneration, which is a welcome but not an essential boon. We use two standing stones, the lover and the shadow. The lover, as mentioned, makes you ethereal whenever a fight ensues and then you can break it with an attack and go boom. The shadow stone will improve our archery. Bretons guided by the shadow can crouch, draw their bow and patiently await until enemies become highlighted. Highlighted enemies can be killed with a single shot essentially because you deal 10 times critical damage to them. Because the bow of shadows makes you invisible, performing this patient attack without any interruption is super easy. The attributes ratio is more or less an even spread between the three. Because the Nightblade spell deals damage depending on your magicka, it's good to have some fortify magicka items on you and maybe even potions and when the time comes to unlock the altar self perk in alteration for 25 extra magicka. Okay, so it's time for me to nerdgasm over some synergy. The main skills are archery, one-handed alteration, sneak and destruction. They enable most of the combat style. There is also a few minor skills slightly perked. We have illusion, just to make the very few illusion spells I use a little bit cheaper. Smithing, just for the arcane blacksmith, so that I can make my bow of shadows a bit stronger. The skill level is at 65 in the video and it seems enough, especially that we have that shadow stone technique. We also have enchanting mastery in enchanting just so my handmade items can reach some satisfying quality sooner or later. But for the main skills in archery our main goals are ranger, quickshot and lion's arrow. We need a few prerequisite perks on our way there so I opted for long distance perks of far shot one rank and impaling shot. Early game is going to be very much a stealth archer so these two will be most useful. Later on you won't need them as much if you play this character for a very long time you may want to consider the close distance perks too. Lion's arrow is of course for casting spells with your fully drawn bow, we have a nice rate of fire on that, so we can fire a lot of spells in consecution. I used the creation club health absorbing spells for Lion's Arrow, like the touch of death. It absorbs 90 points of health per second for 4 seconds, which means, for example, you can regain your lost health easily. If you ever find yourself close to death, use slow time and perform a rapid fire barrage of health absorbing shots. This will mess up your enemies and restore you to full health <laughs> a blink. 
in one handed we go for some dual wielding perks, namely dual flurry 1 and dual savagery. On the opposite side of the tree we want to improve our power attacks with disciplined fighter and furious strength at least. Disciplined fighter is as always a high priority perk, especially for a hybrid build, because you need to protect your stamina and use it wisely for a chunk of your playthrough. Valorous charge and crater maker are used in the video, but you can give them a pass if you have some better ideas. I think it's cool to do a silent roll charge attack and crater maker grants you a chance of launching your targets into space on those attacks. With the slam poetry ability you get from the lover stone you also get a chance to fling them away when you break your ethereal state. So it's a lot of enemies flying. It's fun to have multiple ways of doing that but it's not necessary. No weapon specific perks for this one, too many other priorities. Vokri sneak perks are perfectly balanced. We are going to take most of them and they will make us stupidly elusive especially when combined with the invisibility of the bow of shadows, the short range teleportation of the shadow dance spell, the deadly combat dash of the night blade spell and the short term ethereal state of the lover stone which as you remember triggers each time a new fight starts. Using the escape artist perk means you can restart combat whenever you like, meaning you blink in and out of the ethereal form almost at will. Shadow Warrior is another source of invisibility for us and it makes sure we can perform sneak attacks at will. So of course the sneak attack perks including deadly aim for my bow are also unlocked. Just in case you still don't have enough means of avoiding damage, you will also have to unlock the dodge roll perk, which grants you a brief damage immunity each time you do a silent roll. Like imagine this guy from the perspective of a common bandit. It's, he's so flippin' annoying, elusive and deadly, I would just run away while crapping my pantaloons. Oh look, alteration perks, the same ones I always take, what a surprise. Well, it's not my fault they are so darn useful. Okato's preparation is a must for an auto cast of your best armor spell at the start of a fight. Needless to say, with Escape Artist, if you ever fear you might run out of your armor spell, just crouch and crouch and voila, new armor spell. Stability makes your slow time and your armor spells last for longer, and Sorcerer's Robes improves all your spells, all of them, including Nightblade. It's very, very balanced. We have all ranks of magic resistance and then rank 1 of alter self above it. It's used for magicka because Nightblade spell. Atronach is fully optional for this build, mostly you will just avoid all damage by blinking, hiding, teleporting and shit. And we don't get the Breton Daily spell absorption power with our mod list, so not much to stack the Atronach with. I still decided it could be nice to refill my Magicka for free from time to time, because Nightblade. We need very few perks in Destruction, but they matter quite a lot. Dual casting is a must because we want the Touch of Death to be imprinted on our bow and because we may want to use the Nightblade dual cast. Sadly, there is an error with calculation, dual cast Nightblade actually deals less damage than a normal cast, but it lasts for longer and it's still a crap ton of damage, so it's worth considering in a longer fight. Raw power perk will also improve the damage of your health absorbing spells and the damage of the Nightblade dash of death, so take all three ranks of that. And here are the items I use with the complete build. We have items to obtain, Bow of Shadows, Amulet of Talos, Ethereal Crown, <coughs> Master Robes of Destruction and Alteration, and items to craft. Absorb Magicka Sword and Absorb Health Dagger, Fortify One-Handed Boots, Fortify Magicka Gloves and Fortify Archery Ring. You can buy Master Robes of two magic schools in the College of Winterhold if you are on Anniversary Edition or with the Arcane Accessories creation. These robes reduce the cost of both our main magic schools and also make you regenerate Magicka 150% faster. Yes, please. Ethereal Crown is used because I love combining playstyles and having both the Shadow and the Lover improves both the Archer play and close combat in two distinctive and interesting ways. I'm banning this item for at least 7 builds though, I'm boring. I'm sure now that I have banned it, I will get some comments like Dude, should have used a 3 crown with this build, you idiot lol. Well, that's life. 
Amulet of Talos is used to reduce the shout cooldown while the stability perk is making our slow time effect last for longer. This means we can use slow time really frequently. Not exactly all the time, but very frequently. The thing is, because of my dark roleplay, I also use illusion spells from time to time, namely the possession spell from Triumvirate, which you cast on a living enemy, then you kill them, and then they start fighting for you after they are slain, yes. If you would like to implement a bit more mind control, I would advise you to download Summer Mist Enchantments and use a necklace with Amplify Illusion on it instead of the Amulet of Talos. I know the Absorb Stamina and Absorb Magicka weapons are cheesy as hell, but it is necessary for the build in need of all the attributes, especially that we want to keep both of them high if possible. We get extra weapon damage from current stamina and Nightblade spell deals more damage the more Magicka you have at the moment of performance your deadly dash. The Bow of Shadows is perfectly balanced, especially when it also absorbs a crap ton of health with each shot. It makes you invisible and it fires fast. You gotta use it with this build. The remaining item slots were used to improve my combat skills and my magicka, uh, because Nightblade. Here is a short and sweet list of necessary spells and shouts. To use Possession, I needed some early game illusion training, so I also used some fear spells and the frailty spell from Triumvirate which simply reduces the target's armor rating. Anyway, I have talked about the spells in other sections, so let's freaking sum up. We get a near invincible build that is also extremely fast in terms of movement and DPS. He is versatile and powerful to the point of turning each fight into an exercise in creative mayhem. He teleports and jumps and explodes and disappears at will. Pity half of the build isn't really necessary, but hey, <laughs> it's fun considering how many items and skills are needed for this combo of combat styles to work smoothly, he is also somewhat efficient. I'm giving him a what the hell is even going on out of 10 and consider it a video. Now, thank you very much for watching and I would like to use this opportunity to present you with my new channel, Big Boy Belly, which is a channel for big boys as exemplified by the highbrow humor of my Starfield review there. No. Oh no 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 I, I completely forgot I should have an entire chapter about the themes. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. I can handle this. It's it's okay, Billy. Right. Here is my unbiased and perfectly balanced opinion on the thematic throughline of Starfield's main quest. Thank you for listening. It's a fresh channel that's crossed the 1k subs in less than a month and I can't wait to put more angry runs there, angry runs with meticulous editing and research, but subscribe to this here channel too, I'm not abandoning this one, although I may need more time between uploads because there is a lot to talk about on both. Anyway, like, share, comment, visit Big Boy Belly and have a lot of fun. We will see each other again. Bye!